Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to smash atoms. So, uh, this is going to be a rather shocking project, literally. Although, I don't think CERN has to really worry about this. So, But the idea is here, and I'll show you through the magic of video. Basically, we're going to build a Cockcroft Walton generator. So, what this is, is going to use voltage multiplication to create high voltages. And then we're going to still instill it into this collector at the top of this. Sort of like a Van de Graaff electric generator except having a motor and a rubber band that collects static electricity we're going to use a voltage multiplier very much like those used in, in the Cockrop Walton design. So to kind of back up a little bit the way we're going to do this is I got these sort of nifty little things off of uh, eBay for like three dollars and basically what it is is an air ionizer and so when you pop it apart you get something that looks like this. Now, what happens is there's two stages to this. There's the AC stage that converts the DC coming in from the USB to AC, and then it uh, upvoltages it, and then there's a uh, reconversion back here. So basically, you can see the four diodes here, four diodes, four capacitors, and what's happening is, is each one of these are doubling the voltage. I'm not sure what the voltage output of this is, but it'll give you a good poke. The idea is, is it comes stock, if I can pick this up, with this wire with these little brush ends at the end. And the idea is, is this connects where this red wire is, and air is supposed to flow through it. And you can kind of see it in this little end piece. Now this is probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen, because the surface area of that is so low and there's nothing to circulate the air. It's basically worthless other than to tear apart and throw away. But for this purpose, and, and if you have any um, project where you want to create, you know, or provide, you know, high voltage, you know, pseudo static electric source, because this is really not static electricity, this is multiplied voltage, this will actually do a pretty good job, and it's definitely on the cheap. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is in the end it's going to be powered by USB and we got a cable over here and I'll show you how that comes together and we're going to use a USB power bank to power it. I would not plug this into the computer or have this around any other electronics. It will fry it so be forewarned. You are forewarned. So build this at your own risk. Use this at your own risk. But it is a kind of a novel device and it's going to be very cool looking. Um, but let's get into the build actually. So I printed these parts out. I'll have the link to Thingiverse down below. I'll also have the link to eBay for this guy. Now, <clears throat> what I would suggest is if you're going to do this, I'd get a couple of these. These were literally like $2.99 or something. So I bought like a half dozen just to have around to experiment with. Um, because they do break very easily. So I've already broken one uh, building this project. So it, it does happen because again, they're pretty cheap. But anyways, you get the idea. So what happens here is, uh, let's move a couple of these other pieces out of the way. So we have the top piece. Now this is probably the most important piece and this is printed out of Protopasta's uh, conductive filament. So I'll have the link for this down below. This was difficult. I did a video on this a little while back as I was printing this and you can kind of see here the top didn't come out as nice as I had wanted it to. And I'll probably rework this but I wanted to use this for the video because this stuff is rather expensive. Um, this, this actually cost me far more than electronics. This was about pretty close to 14 bucks uh, in plastic to print this out. Maybe if you looked around you could get it a little bit cheaper but uh, uh, I got it some loose spooled stuff off of uh, eBay or something like that for around 12 or 14 bucks. Um, just about enough to do this. I got a little bit left over. But anyways, uh, one of the things I would suggest is if you're going to print this, uh, as you get to the top here, I would try to adjust up the flow rate and probably go to about 120 on the flow rate, at least 110, 120, uh, because you can kind of see how it pulls apart. This stuff is really, uh, again, very interesting to print with. It's very difficult. I had to try printing this three times um, because it just simply didn't work. And again, you can go back and watch the other video and see my uh, how I actually got this one to work. So anyways, here this is. I've also got a small stainless steel screw in the top of it uh, to connect the wire to. This red wire over here is going to connect to it. And then... Um, Again, I've got an insulative column, and again, this is more for aesthetics that I have it bumped out like this. And then what will happen is this will go in like this, <clears throat> and it will sit on this base, and so you'll have something like this. And then what happens, this base pops into the bottom, and it's notched for the USB cord. And then you have these two extra pieces 
which will go in the center here. So let's go ahead and assemble this piece. So the way that this works is we're going to take this piece, and you might have to clean it up a little bit, and uh, depending upon the facets, uh, you might have to spin this around a little bit to get this to pop in, but this should pop in pretty much like this. And you'll notice that it's a little bit squared with the round, or a little bit of uh, round in the middle to allow the wire and stuff to pass through. So what we'll do is we'll actually feed this through and feed this up in here. Um, and it's always easier said than done. So I'm going to actually pop this out. It's probably easier to go this route. Um, there we go. So you see how this pops through like this? <clears throat> and then we'll slide it through. And then again, push it back down in here. And it pops in, in like that. Now what we have is the bottom piece. And now this is a ground wire. And I'll talk about this a little bit in a minute. So you got your hot wire and your ground wire. Because one of the pieces is, since we're using USB power, the ground's isolated in a real Van de Graaff static electric generator. Um, you have a ground to it, an earthen ground, and so that's where it creates the differential. So without this ground, you don't have a differential, but we'll talk about that a little bit more when we assemble it. So I put a hole down here. Now, this is something I had to do as I adjusted the design uh, a little bit after the fact, so you notice that's why it's a little bit off-center. I had to drill it. The uh, one end thing reverse will have the hole in the design. So basically what we want to do is slide the ground through there. <clears throat> And then what we want to do, now you may have to clean this up with a file a little bit to get it to slide in because it's going to have to, unlike this one, unlike the one in the top that sits in the top, this one is going to need to slide. And what you have to do is kind of adjust this around a little bit. And this, this probably will take some uh, working to kind of get right uh, to get everything lined up. <coughs> Okay, so after a little bit of cussing and everything else, you'll get this uh, in here. And then what you'll want to do is take a little bit of glue and place a little bit of glue around here. And we'll do that in a minute. But before I do that, I kind of want to show you how this comes together. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to actually hold this top because it's going to press against it. And what that's going to do is we're going to put the USB extension cable that we've got. And again, I've got this from Amazon Basics, and I'll put the link down below. It's about a three-foot cable. Uh, kind of run it through there and then what's going to happen is we're going to then place this through the bottom here and whoops I'm gonna, sorry about bumping you guys and I'm gonna run this through here and see this presses up inside this will actually go up inside there and then what happens is we then run this through this corner piece and we actually need to run this other ground wire out and then what we do is we'll snap this bottom piece on here. And that'll take a little bit of gyration, if you will, to snap this piece in. And then what will happen is we will take and we will not do that. We'll push that back down. And then what we'll do is we'll attach this, this wire right here to this screw and then wrap this around inside, around like this, and then that'll be basically be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this up and then we're going to come back and we'll see it actually work. So let's go ahead and glue this up and I'll be back in a quick second. Okay, so we're back. We have it assembled and uh, here's what it looks like. So what I've done is I've connected this extra ground lead uh, with a zip strip to the USB and it's being powered by this large power bank. Now one of the things I forgot to mention in the onset is uh, if you look at the front here, there's a ground uh, marking on here. And if you flip it over, it's this outside pin on the USB is the ground. And uh, this is what you want to connect the wire to and then what's going to happen is there's going to now be a differential between this and this ground. Uh, because this is a closed circuit, you know, so if you want to, um, you know, for example, try bending water, etc. Uh, again, you take this to the other side, and if you touch this and then touch this top, uh, you, you're going to get it, you're going to get a poke. 
Uh, it's not a huge poke. Again, do this at your own risk. This is all at your own risk. But you will get a poke and you will have a differential in just holding your hand on this. And obviously I don't have the other hand on the ground, so I'm not getting the shock. Um, I've sort of gotten a little bit used to it, uh, again, making this video. This has been kind of a little bit of trial and error getting all this to work. So um, this PLA does conduct actually pretty good. And because of the service area, it does act as a bit of a capacitor for voltage uh, buildup on it. Uh, so when you do grab it, it does create a differential. So I thought this was actually a pretty cool project. It came out um, pretty nice and I was happy with it. So, uh, again, the only piece you really do the glue up on is this bottom piece. I use some five minute epoxy. The rest is all um, just kind of snapped together, this bottom and the other pieces. Um, the only reason I didn't do a little bit of snap together here is uh, I want it to be easy to push up inside here. And, uh, you know, actually, and the reason I, you could probably make this into one piece, join these two together. Uh, and then just insert it through the bottom or the, the board, but I wasn't sure in the original design So I just kind of left it as it is so if you want to hack around with it feel free um, If you make one of these let me know how it works out for you and what you think uh, I'm probably going to also make a version of this That's like a nightlight or something where I put some LEDs in here, and it's not a high voltage um, You know apparatus or what have you because I just think this really looks cool, and I love the idea of the Van de Graaff electric, uh, static electric generator and that, and this is really a nice little model. So, anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, let's get it like this. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. Like I say, I got links for all the stuff, the protopasta, the high voltage ionizer, the cable and everything down below. So if you want to build your own, just click on those links and you can pick up the parts. Again, super cheap. The most expensive part was actually the PLA, conductive PLA for this. So again, if you got questions, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget the swag shop up over there. Subscribe button going to be coming up over there. And hey, we'll see you, <coughs> see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.